love small form factor computers and there is no computer on the planet that does this as well as the M4 Mac Mini. I had a few concerns though, and they were legitimate concerns. I was worried that this thing wouldn't be able to keep up with my workflow. I was worried it was gonna get too hot or too loud because when you have a form factor that small, I mean, that is absolutely tiny to keep in all that heat. I also had a few concerns about getting enough RAM. Was this thing really gonna be able to keep up with my RAM requirements? And if I purchased a small amount of RAM, I could never upgrade it over time. And those are all legitimate concerns. Now we're about three months out from that initial concern with that M4 Mac Mini. And so I wanna give you my experience of this little mini powerhouse. So to start out, let's talk about the externals of this thing. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful. This little tiny aluminum box is a gorgeous little piece of tech when it's on your desktop it looks amazing it's just a small metal box it's hard to not like that and so the feel of this product is absolutely premium which all Mac products or all Apple products end up feeling very premium now when you're looking at this thing some of the first things you notice is the power buttons on the bottom some people have had some huge issues with the power button being on the bottom I've had no issues at all with that it's you turn it on one time and, and maybe twice a year you actually touch that button, no big deal. And then you notice on the front of the computer there's two USB-C slots, those are 10 gigabit per second, which is relatively fast. I don't know too many people who need you know, the 40 gigabits per second, which is on the back of the PC. And so having those two ports on the front is extremely helpful. Now there's a headphone jack on the front, which is awesome because sometimes you just wanna be able to plug in a pair of headphones really quick. For the most part though, most people have moved away from the 3.5 millimeter jack. I know like audio professionals, people who are kind of enthusiasts with audio, they love having wired headphones, but for the most part, most people are just gonna get AirPod Pros or AirPods Maxes or regular AirPods and use those as their daily driver if they're going to have headphones in their ears. The port selection on the back is also really great. You've got a gigabit ethernet port on the back. That's configurable up to 10 gig uh, ethernet, which is really helpful if you're somebody who uses a lot of file transfers and you've got other PCs connected around the house through a network, really, really helpful. And then you got three Thunderbolt 4 connectors on the back, which is sweet because that's 40 gigabits per second. That's very fast transfer speeds. And so you can connect multiple fast SSDs or different things like that. You could connect a Thunderbolt 4 dock to this thing and that's great. If you go up to the Pro chip, that will have Thunderbolt 5. In my workflow, I don't really need more speed. Thunderbolt 4, totally fine for 4K videos and large files like that to me. So in the past three months, the port selection has been great. There has been one thing that I wish it had, which was a legacy USB-A port. I know there's haters of the USB-A port out there. People say everybody's moved on from that, but every keyboard I've ever gotten has a 2.4 gig, you know, gigahertz wireless USB-A dongle with it. And so I have to find an adapter or put it into a dongle. And that's just really frustrating. And so for me, like I would love just one single USB-A port just so I don't have to find a dongle or a dock or something like that when I need it. Also, it would have been pretty sweet to have an SD card slot on the front of it, which it does not. Uh, but that's really for the Mac Studio. I mean, that's for professional users. Now you can get these little docks that sit uh, perfectly underneath the Mac Mini, and that one has an SD card slot, the one that I got, so that's really helpful. And so the port selection, the physical design of this is great. Now the main draw of the Mac Mini is the size. The form factor of this thing is absolutely incredible. It is absolutely mind-blowing to me how much power they have packed into such a small package. I mean, it's not all that much bigger than an Apple TV. And so if you're kind of concerned about size-wise, like you could literally Velcro this thing onto the back of your computer and you would have a beautiful looking, all-in-one looking setup. And so it's just incredible that this Mac Mini can fit absolutely anywhere. We're gonna talk about some use cases at the end of this video of, of different ways people have used such a small computer. And so we'll get to that, but just know that, man, this thing, the size is, it is amazing. Now the issue with the physical design of the Mac Mini is you've gotta ask yourself the question, do I need a screen on my device? Can I use this mobily? No, it's a desktop PC, but if you have a screen at work and you've got a keyboard and stuff like that at work, you can have a set at your house and a set at work and just take this thing back and forth. I mean, it literally could fit inside your pocket. Uh, but you've got to ask yourself, do you actually need a mobile computer? Um, and I'm going to do a video about that, about desktops versus laptops with MacBooks and Mac minis. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Now let's talk about the inside. The M4 chip is absolutely a, a monster, right? 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 core neural engine, which for most people, they don't even care about that stuff. That just means it is a beast when it comes to performance, especially for the size of this thing. Now what's incredible is the base model finally comes with 16 gigs of RAM, which 99.9% .9 of people would be absolutely fine with 16 gigs of RAM. It is configurable up to 32 gigs of RAM with the base model. And so for me, 
I'm sticking with 16 gigs. I find it just fine. Now, the swap memory on a Mac Mini is so fast that even if you exceed that 16 gigs, it will swap it out with your SSD, which if you're not a, a you know computer nerd like me, that just means you're gonna get more speed out of your computer. Now it does degrade the life of the SSD just a little bit. I don't really think anybody's gonna notice. I don't think people are gonna use these things until that day happens. And so if your concern is kind of the degradation of your SSD, don't worry about it. All of the encoding and decoding engines in this thing make it fantastic for anybody who is a video professional. Like for me, I use H.264. It's got a you know, hardware accelerator for that, HEVC, ProRes, it's got hardware acceleration. It's an, an absolute monster if you're somebody who is doing a creative workflow. And so if you are somebody who does creative work, don't be scared about the size of this thing. It can absolutely keep up. I know a lot of guys who have really large YouTube channels and they run their whole thing off of a M4 Mac Mini. Uh, they had Mac Studio M1 Ultras and all that kind of stuff. And then the M4 Mac Mini comes along and it runs essentially the same. Yes, there are differences if you have a massive, massive workflow. Absolutely true. But for the average person, the average creator, the person who's not like, you know, doing Hollywood movies, you're gonna be fine. Now I wanna talk about one of my favorite things with this new Mac Mini is the speaker in it. The old Mac Mini, the speaker sounded like absolute garbage. You could not use it. You literally had to buy speakers or you had to use your AirPods with it so that you could have any kind of good audio quality. The speaker in the new M4 Mac Mini is pretty awesome. It's not gonna win any awards. It's not gonna blow your mind but it is absolutely passable for what it is. And so for these last three months, I have not put speakers on my desktop because if I really, really need a good audio experience, I'm gonna use my AirPods, but the speaker in it is just fine for YouTube videos, talking head videos, podcasts, audiobooks, all that. If you are listening to music through it a lot, you're probably gonna wanna get speakers. I don't really listen, to, I've been a professional musician for a long time. I don't really listen to music all that much anymore. That's kind of like my work side. And so, uh, man, I, I, you know, for videos and, and audiobooks and all that kind of stuff, it's fantastic. Now the M4 Mac Mini does fall short in one specific area. It does not have a camera and it does not have a microphone, which leads me to today's sponsor, Obsbot. Hey, thanks Obsbot for sponsoring this portion of today's video. This is the Obsbot Tiny 2 Lite. It is an incredible, look at that, it's so tiny. A tiny little webcam with microphones so that you can get good 4K quality image out of your Mac Mini. Now obviously the cool thing about this little webcam is the fact that it has pan, tilt, and zoom functionality built into it and so it auto tracks you. It does have gestures you can do that it understands. And the most incredible thing about this is the image quality. To me, I've used MacBooks my entire life, and so having the MacBook image quality in my mind when I think of webcam, this thing absolutely destroys the webcam in MacBooks, and just overall the quality is really, really good. All right, this is the image quality that you're gonna get out of the Tiny 2 Lite. It's a beautiful image, it's a half inch CMOS sensor, it's a 4K image that you're seeing right now, uh, and the low light performance is pretty awesome. Right now I only have an Edison bulb on next to me, and so if you don't wanna get out a whole lighting kit for your business meetings and all that, I think this is a great option. And if you're gonna be using it in a meeting and you need it to start tracking you, you just put up two hands like this. It'll start tracking you. Move around your room. Wife is right there, chilling. And that's how it works. And then once you get back into place where you wanna be, like this, put up a hand. And all of a sudden it stops tracking you. Now this can do 4K 30 or 1080p 60 which for a lot of people who have like a gaming channel, 1080, 60 is what you wanna do. Now this is the Tiny 2 Lite, which is the little brother to the Tiny 2, which is actually half the price of the bigger brother and it has most of the main features. Now ever since 2020, people have been very comfortable having meetings online. And so if you're a worker at home, this is gonna be a fantastic addition to your setup. There's also more people today than ever online teaching. And so if you're somebody who needs this to track you left and right as you're teaching, as you're moving around your space, uh, this is the best possible solution for you because it'll auto track you wherever you go. Not only will it pan and tilt with you wherever you're walking, it'll also zoom in and zoom out to track you forward and backward. Another cool thing is just the way this is designed. It's got a little opening on it so that it can sit up on your MacBook or on a, you know, I did this on my desktop PC and put it on my monitor. It's just really handy, but it also has a quarter 20 screw right here. So you can put it on something like a tripod that you would put a normal camera on. And so if you're kind of a content creator and you're doing your own cooking videos or something like that, like my wife does, you could use this and it could be your only camera. If you wanna get your tiny two light, go ahead and hit the link in the description below. Thank you again, Osbot, for sponsoring today's video. Let's jump back into it. All right, next let's talk about the price of this thing for $5.99 
you will not find a more powerful computer. Yes, there are some, you know, there's new chips coming out all the time on the PC side of things. The Ryzen chips specifically are just really, really impressive. Um, however, the M4 Mac Mini, it does outperform them for the most part. There are some areas where a PC chip is just, it's just gonna do better. Um, but for the average user, I think, you know, especially with the single core performance on the M4 Mac Mini, for most people, that's gonna really blow their mind. So for $599, that is an unbelievable price. But the question is, can you have a $599 computer with only a 250, was it 256 gig hard drive? I don't think so anymore. You need a larger SSD than that. I, would, I wouldn't personally go with anything lower than one terabyte. And so that does bump the price up. If you do end up going from that 256 all the way up to the one terabyte, that's gonna add, you know, $400 to this thing, so it's about a $1,000 computer at that point, which is still a fantastic price for a computer, but then you may also wanna get a little bit more RAM if you wanna future-proof yourself, specifically if you're a creative professional, that's gonna bump it up another $200, and so you're looking at a $1,200, $1,300 computer, and then on top of that, you're possibly gonna to wanna to buy a dock for it, and so if you're getting a Thunderbolt 5 dock, that's probably gonna add another 400 bucks to it. So it can get pricey, so if you're somebody who's going beyond just the base, model of this thing, you gotta be really, really careful. I mean, that's where Apple makes all of their money is these small little upgrades that you kinda need to do in order to make it a little bit better of an experience. But here's the thing, with that $599 price tag, you're getting an amazing experience. You can put a hard drive or an SSD on this thing as like an external storage solution. And so for me, I would stick down at that base model um, and, and if you're gonna do any upgrades at all, just upgrade the SSD, leave the rest of it alone because you don't wanna get into that kind of priced here that you're gonna just, you'd be better off with a Mac Studio at that point. So who's the M4 Mac Mini for? It's for people who love having a really cheap base model computer that is going to be an absolute powerhouse. And so for you, if you're doing like a home theater PC, this thing would be an absolute tank for that. If you're doing a home server, this would be incredible for that. Or if you're just somebody who you don't need to be on the go all the time. I think that's one of the biggest things is it is still a desktop. Yes, you can unplug it. Yes, you can have different setups in different places and take it with you. Uh, but if you're for the most part gonna be stationary, this thing is going to be an absolute beast, especially for like students who maybe they have an iPad and they go to class with their iPad and take notes on the iPad, then they come home and the real work or their dorm or wherever you go as a student, I don't it's been a long time since I've been in school, but then you come home to your dorm and you do your real work on your computer, it's fantastic as a stationary device and it's cheap. And so if you're kind of on a ramen diet, you can do this. So here's the thing, essentially the Mac mini is for anybody who isn't a hardcore gamer. So after three months, this thing is absolutely incredible. I could not recommend it more but you may be wondering if you need some accessories for it. If you do, go ahead and click this video right here. Like the video, sub to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.